So we're back at the boat. All of us are here, which um, hasn't happened for a while. Um, but we've got a new toy. <laughs> um, I think Andy might have mentioned it in the last episode that we were getting a new van. Um, and I can find it. Here it is. It's a very discreet van. You won't see us coming. Andy's just inside, um, fiddling about with it, trying to get the diesel heater working. Have you got the diesel heater working? Well, I had. Huh. I think it might have stopped. Welcome to our van. Um, we're probably going to build a little storage area up there. Yeah, quite possibly. Or a little... Let's not put too many projects on the list. I think we've got enough with Melody. There you go. Huge garage. We can fit all sorts of huge things in here. I actually need to get a ladder out and get some sicker flex because the hatch oh, is leaking. Anyway. I'm just on the top of the roof, just seeing if I can see anywhere the water's coming in. Andy's going to come up here and be like, what on earth have you done? But I've realised why I'm getting in such a mess is because there's a hole in the side of the tube. Is there anything different about this? We've just ordered some LED bulbs to replace the old bulbs that are in there. The issue must be the spring fittings. Because these ones yeah. have worked. Yeah, that works perfectly. So, we've got so you the... take out the incandescent bulb. That's the incandescent bulb. There you go, that That's works. That That's the old style incandescent bulb. There we go. And replace it with the like for like LED equivalent. And it works perfectly and in this one you use take out the incandescent bulb and replace it with an identical like for like led replacement and it doesn't work he fixed it yeah it's um yeah while well, taking it all apart it's just the just the polarity because of course incandescent bulbs are not polarity sensitive whereas led newfangled led bulbs are all polarity they will get a bit a bit woke if the, you get them the wrong way around. <laughs> oh, I'm not going to work because you haven't put me the right way around. Woke the, bulbs. <laughs> yeah, they're woke bulbs. All get offended and won't but work. Andy, if you get the you don't, the right don't go around. off on a rant. Oh, sorry. Okay, I'll behave. <laughs> but yeah, they they won't. Uh, they go on strike if you <laughs> go all liberal. <laughs> you get the unions involved. You haven't got my polarity the right way around. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just setting up up here um, an area to paint the panels that Andy did last week in the um, saloon. Um, so I'm going to paint these and then we're going on a camping trip in the van. It's probably going to be a, <laughs> a bit brutal because we haven't set it up um, but um, Jack really 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 wants to stay in the van so we're going to go and drive down the seafront somewhere and sleep in the van in the wind and the rain. I was just going to say to everyone, because at the start of this episode, I was like, we're going to go and stay in the camper van tonight. We're not going to stay in the camper van tonight. Not happening. The, not, others, the, the, di the diesel heater doesn't work. It does. Well, we just can't doesn't. get it to work. It does work. It's the glow plug's, co the glow plug's coked up and, uh, up and it's an easy fix. I can fix it in a couple of hours, but it's dark and it's windy and I'm not doing it. Yeah. So anyway, um, and I... I do this quite often where I overestimate the amount of stuff that we can do in a short space of time. So we're going to go on the way home tomorrow because we've got to go home tomorrow because we've got stuff to do on Monday. Mm -hmm. um, so we will still be staying in the camper van, but just tomorrow night. I just need to. Jack's not, very disappointed. Not, he's he's okay. Yeah, well, he's okay. He's okay. He was a bit. He was a, he bit, was a bit disappointed. So we're definitely staying in it tomorrow. Um, I just need to not be so eager. 
yeah. Yeah. Still a lot to do tomorrow. Yeah, I know. But we're definitely staying in it tomorrow. Okay. Well, I am, and Jack is. I'm done. It's a ridiculous time at night, but I'm done. Both sides have some primer on. Last night, these panels, we took down and Melissa painted them. So I'm going to put them all back up so that we can work out. Uh, I can start thinking about making the wooden, nice trim pieces to go across the joins and around the port lights and stuff. <laughs> The panels are all back up, one or two of them actually need just a little bit of tweaking and trimming which is fine, I expected that. Um, but yeah, they're all fit quite nicely. Uh, you'll notice they're painted grey. We're not keeping them grey, um, but what we are considering doing um, after last week's comments is painting them uh, in, in some white or off-white paint. Um, we've, as you know, you can probably see it there. If you have a look over in that corner of the screen we used the vinyl in the pilot house and it looks it looks awesome actually we really like the effect um, but we're trying out some different ideas it's not costing a lot to do that vinyl's dirt cheap to buy it's like 20 quid 25 quid a pack and uh, goes a long way so what we're doing with this we've painted it all anyway so it's all sealed and we're gonna fit the teak trim and stuff I'm gonna take these panels home and sand them flat and paint them and sand them flat and paint them and, and see how they come up with just a paint finish and then we can make a decision if we'd like the paint finish then we can go with that we could even revert back to that in the pilot house if we wanted to um, and if we don't like the paint finish then we've got the vinyl we can just cover it in vinyl it's no problem so um, yeah we're still trying out what we like and what we don't like and what looks good what looks dated uh, what looks a bit old-fashioned and what kind of fits with the character of the boat as well so um, thanks for all the comments on that last week but uh, and we are taking that on board and trying out a few different ideas to see what we like can't say better than that right next job um, I'm gonna start uh, looking at making some mahogany trim pieces to cover up the joins in the panels we've got a load of this uh, tongue and groove M mahogany floorboarding from eBay uh, tons of it like enough to do a large kitchen kind of thing huge amounts and I've got the garage full of it um, and it's in it's fine it's absolutely perfect um, but being tongue and groove that's no good to me so I'm going to trim off the tongue and trim off the groove cut it all down to 55 mil wide or something like that or the widths that I want um, and use that I'm not sure if it's mahogany or sapili or oroco or it's one of that family isn't it and it, but it looks nice when it's uh, all cleaned up and it'll look great in the saloon and it looks great up here uh, so i'm gonna go outside to trim these pieces down and cut them to the right shape um but uh, there's no point in me putting any audio on this because it is blowing a gale out there so uh, you won't be able to hear anything so cue music <laughs> glued together uh, until just yet because I want to bevel the edges and all of that stuff and paint the panels at home but and that's perfect actually and then I can make everything else fit up to that But that there panel is 
Correct. It's uh, So this is the electrical panel. Take four screws out, you get to all your electrics, and it's all independent. That's going to go home with all the others. It's all going to get painted and sanded and varnished within an inch of its life and made to look super pretty, uh, and then brought back to the boat and fitted. Um, and yeah, I think that'll look nice when it's all done. One nice thing about doing all this woodwork is uh, it makes the boat smell like a wood yard instead of a metal workshop and uh, it's an altogether nice and smell to them. So this piece is just to where the panels join. Andy is um, he's just working on the surrounds for the hatches. Well, you oh, you should have the goggles. You're working outside. I was wearing goggles. Were you wearing goggles as well? Yeah. I've got them on my head, so I don't know where your goggles are coming from. I had different goggles. Oh, there you go. Those Dewalt goggles are very very good. If uh, DeWalt fancy sponsoring us, I wouldn't say no. <laughs> the original timbers were kind of sick of flex to the steel. Still got to do a bit of tidying up there, as you can see, but they were bonded, and wood bonded to steel is never a clever idea. Um, so, of course, you get moisture and condensation, and you get a bit of build up of scale and rust behind that wood, and you have to prise the wood off and break it to get it off. So these frames will be screwed up, um, but when we want to just do any repairs or maintenance, we can take out four screws and the whole frame will come down as a unit. So we're having a little bit of a, a think about how we're constructing these uh, hatch frames and so on. And doing it on the boat is all well and good and we can mock it up on the boat and that's fine. Um, but I wasn't happy with the jointing technique that I, would, I was using on that so it was just a butt joint and I want to do something a little bit more sophisticated on the jointing uh, which means doing it at home in the workshop so what we're going to do instead of mocking it up and wasting wood um, I'm gonna we're gonna mock it up in a uh, foam board and take it home so we've got precise it's much quicker to work with and we've got precise fitted parts that we can take home and then I can copy them exactly at home in the workshop uh, and do some some nicer joints in the timber. So this is the foam board we're using and we can um, put it all together with some uh, hot glue and then we know the pieces will fit perfectly when they come back. my um, foam board hatch so um, these uh, now fit uh, yeah they do I didn't mark which way around it was but they they are 50 50 centimeters square so they should go either way so in actual fact that's a snug fit there and what happens if I just turn it round 90 degrees I think it should just should just go in yeah, not quite and that's just because Although they are 50 centimetre square hatches, there are some slight indiscrepancies in the, the build, aren't there? It does actually. It goes in any way. So there's one, the proof in, in the pudding, as it were, is whether it fits the other hatch and whether I'm going to have to make another. And it fits the other hatch perfectly as well. Perfect. Very, very nice indeed. So there's my window one, window, port light, whatever. Um, uh, it looks very, very complicated and it's all covered in lots of lines and hash marks and 
vectors and everything else. Uh, and the beauty of doing it in Depron foam means that I can take out this corner, which has got my um, my radius on, which is a two inch 50 mil radius. And I can, I've got everything written on. I've got a couple of little tabs there, so I know my lengths. And I can take out the whole of the inside. And then that will fit perfectly into our port light apertures. And just to check that they are symmetrical, it actually goes the other way up as well, and it fits in all of them. I know, um, that's shocking. Yeah, they're all the same. We've managed uh, to make one, you've managed to make yeah. one Depron thing for the, for the hatch, for the hatch which for fits the in deck hatches. both hatches, and this fits in all four windows. And the beauty of this means that, you know, when we're busy and can't get back to the boat, I wonder I if can they be, fit in the full peak windows. I think they're definitely smaller. I'll go and have a look in a second. But it means that when when we're busy and can't get to the boat for whatever reason, I can be doing nice bits of woodwork along with the, the bowsprit and the other metalwork I've still got to do at home, uh, from home. Anyway, we're done on the boat now, so we're just going to pack up, but don't go away because there's more coming on Jack's favourite thing in this episode, the... Camper van! It's night of the year to stay in the van, and in Jack is still asleep. But it's half past six, and I just thought I'd show you where we are because it's beautiful. Last night it was two degrees. <laughs> what we'll say is we were really warm and cosy in our beds. Jack had an Arctic sleeping bag, like rated to really cold temperatures. Um, but <laughs> we still couldn't get the diesel heater working. So we need to take that home and strip it apart and see what's going on there. Jack's awake now, <laughs> but it's time to go home, so we'll see you next time on Sailing Melody. Please click and subscribe. Sub 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 subscribe. Subscribe. Yeah, thank you so much for watching. Yeah. Yeah, and leave us a comment about what you think of our new van that's <laughs> it's not going to turn into a major project that's going to get in the way of Melody, don't worry. We're only going to make yeah, some Yeah, we sort still of... love Melody. Melody yeah, 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 is yeah, yeah. much more comfortable to sleep this is the this but is it's... the stepping stone to melody so we're not going to detract from melody to work on the van but um see you next time bye, bye. bye.
Just to feel good